I don't know where this god power came from, but put it to good use, Kakarot! Uh... Unlike you, Moro, I train my body to withstand this power. <laughs> so this is Rising Fist and Blackbird Studios. Goku absorbed, Moro becomes the ultimate life form, Dragon Ball Dark Part 1. They reached out to me a while back and I wanted to give the video, the original video, some time to breathe before I made my review on it but you guys already see how fire this actually is. Personally, to me, I think that Moro's ending could have had so much more to it. It could have been so much more of a threat to the stability of the multiverse and the hierarchy of angels, and they kind of completely squandered it. So that's why this kind of concept where Moro actually survives at the end of the Moro arc is so intriguing. Everything seems to play out in the beginning just like it did normally in in the Moro arc except for one thing and that is when Goku goes into his mastered ultra instinct form Moro ends up just grabbing onto him and he doesn't dodge which I wish he would have got a little bit more explanation of but when he grabs him he starts absorbing Goku and Goku is almost powerless to do anything while Vegeta tries to take matters into his own hands <laughs> Okay, that was sick. Did you guys see what just happened there? Vegeta threw the spirit ball trying to destroy Moro as he has Goku in his grasp, but he absorbs Goku all the way to the very end as the ball hits him and what seemingly is an explosion that destroys Moro is actually just Moro finally absorbing Goku, but a last little bit of Goku and his aura, his Susano form, I guess is one way to call it, still lives around this new Moro, but it is short lived because Moro ends up absorbing that last little bit of freedom of that energy that Goku had left. That's what makes it so cool because Goku was so smart and so quick to try to use Susano to get out of that grasp and not be absorbed, but in the end, he was too late. Have I done it? Have I truly become the ultimate life form? <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
I am telling you right now, Moro really is him. He is that guy because his old body could not function with Ultra Instinct. It could not regulate that kind of power, that ferocity. He really couldn't handle it. And so the ops, Goku, who's literally right in front of him, he decided to take matters into his own hands and took a body that could handle all that power because Goku has been training his entire life. And then immediately as he gets into that body, he shows Vegeta you're not the guy you are not the guy Vegeta he is just doing the bare minimal to be able to defeat and crush Vegeta and using even the reality of space-time continuum to stop him in his tracks I mean Vegeta he granted he tried he tried he even was bursting as you guys could see in the colorization he was bursting with that ultra ego fire underneath him but even then that wasn't enough that wasn't even close to enough and i honestly don't think ultra ego vegeta really could do any damage to this guy this is a ferocious opponent and i gotta give a props to moro because and and to rising fist and blackbird studios this was an awesome awesome idea So this dude really just said yum 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 give me that gallic gun and ate the entire attack and then after that he's like nah you guys you know what this is a nice little cute little warm up but he instantly realizes that this is boring as shit and honestly I don't know if Moro would have that side to him without Goku. Goku in his darkest form like say goku like an evil goku like a real evil goku not someone taking goku's body but an evil goku would probably not have the appetite to face off against a lot of the weaker opponents that he often tries to train against or fight against just to see their power he would just be like this i am gonna set my sights higher to somebody else because it ain't you uh, uh. He, he left man I hope Goku is okay. You hope Goku's okay? Dude, he got eaten. He got gobbled up. This is Goku now. This is Moro Goku. Moku, really. This, come on, Krillin. You're smarter than that. This all seems very familiar. It's like when Boo absorbed that Kai. So Goku is still in there somewhere. It seems my new goal is clear. In order to save that fool, I will have to surpass him. I will be the strongest in the universe! If the old Vegeta had said that, I would have scoffed. But this time I feel different. Yeah, I'm rooting for you, Vegeta. Go get him. And you know what's crazy? This is like a believable end to say that if this happened, this arc would believably end like this. They can't do anything. And now they gotta go save Goku from Moro's grasp, similar to Boo, I would imagine. I don't know why they're equating it that way, because Boo is a completely different creature than, than the android that was essentially robbing people. But I mean, I guess if your logic is sound, but Vegeta's goal to get stronger than Goku in order to save Goku, that's hot. I like that. You summoned us, Father. Indeed.
Supreme Kai of the Seventh, Shin. Yes, my lord. I have considered your request. If you will simply bring Goku to me, I will do as you wish, and revive my son as a mortal. But I must meet this Moro face to face. Lord <gasps> Beerus, destroying Goku is forbidden, understand? As you wish, father. Right, well, I'll return with haste, my lord. So Moro shows up to Beerus' planet and just kind of waits for him like Thanos at the end of Endgame. Like, this is some hardcore stuff right here because Moro is really one of the strongest, but it's not clear whether he's stronger or as strong as Beerus. I wouldn't imagine he is because even the Grand Priest is telling Beerus, do not destroy what this Goku is, like this guy. Don't destroy him. And I would imagine maybe he still has the capabilities of doing so, but he's got angelic power plus the magic plus Goku. I mean, this is a heavy hitter. I was almost half expecting Moro to just show up, teleport there on his own, but I'm kind of glad he didn't. We need some boundaries for this new character and see exactly like how strong he actually is. You, Lord Beerus, I've been waiting for you. Come face me now. Lord Beerus is off limits, I'm afraid, but the Grand Priest would like to meet you and he's much stronger. I seem to remember this Grand Priest in Goku's memory. He is likely the most supreme being in the multiverse. I will take you to the Grand Priest in an instant. The only way you can visit the Grand Priest is through my assistance. So if you don't mind... Ugh. Please bring Vegeta here. I am going to prove once and for all that the destroyer's technique is superior. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. I mean, a lot of you guys probably were anticipating that I was going to say this, but uh, here it goes. This is the superior ending to the Moro arc. It is so much better than what actually ended up happening because it rocks the status quo and it easily kind of like flows into Ultra Ego Vegeta's training. It is just that superior because this is an actual threat and it feels multi-layered. Like I don't need to see the strongest uh, out of all the universe, like the wish that made the strongest. I don't need to see all that when we already got the strongest, which is Moro and Moro back with Goku. Like this honestly might be one of my favorite evil Goku stories as of yet. It is just so good with the way that it, the character design is not for one. And then just it's Goku aesthetically looking, but Moro is fully in control and using Goku as essentially a battery maybe and a vessel and a computer because he's looking through his memories and stuff. I like that sort of interaction and this to me is a better way of doing that than even just switching bodies. Well, I suppose you are here to challenge me, correct? Very well, but don't get your hopes up about facing my full power. <clears throat> Moro trying to face off against the Grand Priest from the perspective of anybody that is intelligent, even what Moro used to be because at the time of this recording, at the time of this video, Moro has a huge dose of Goku in him, is just idiotic and stupid because the fact that the strength that Goku, Moro, and just that level of Moro and that level of Goku have is not even close to one of the angels yet. It may be on par with the God of Destruction, maybe not, but one of the angels and 
and the Grand Priest is the strongest of all the angels, and he has not only trained them, but he is their father? Come on, there's no way. But here's the thing where it's believable, because it is Goku, and Goku's gonna wanna fight the strongest, and the strongest, and the strongest, and not really care. He's gonna lunge in and try to fight, and Moro has been tinted by that. He is He's completely a different character now. This is a complete, this is not really Moro, and this is not really Goku. It's a mixture of the two, and it's a damn good mixture. I love, I love it, man. This is such a cool concept. And I mean, the Grand Prix showed him like, listen, I'm gonna show you what a real, what a real power level looks like. I'm gonna show you who the goon actually is and went into goblin mode uh, and probably used maybe 2%, 1% of his power to knock Goku back several times forward and completely negate all his attacks. I mean, this dude isn't even really breaking any type of sweat whatsoever. He's casually, casually finessing Moro Goku. Well, that was a nice workout. Come back when you have improved. Although I cannot use my full power, I enjoy the exercise. Good day. Take me to the Grand Priest, or face me yourself. Hm. You... I want to face the strongest, not waste my time. I am anything but a waste of time. first person to spill my blood. When I faced him, for the first time my body was telling me my life was in danger. My heart raced and over time I realized that feeling is what I had been craving all along. <laughs> Return to Monkey, is it? Let's see that destructive potential, Vegeta. And just like I called it, the Grand Priest is just way too strong for even this version of Moro Goku to face. And I like that we got the connection to the Ultra Instinct and the Susano forms because even the Grand Priest has his own. Now the Grand Priest is not supposed to face off against any mortals, but maybe because Moro has some angelic and a divine key and a mixture, it's a weird situation, maybe he can fight him here. But he tells him, come back when you're stronger, which I don't know if that's the smartest play because of course, of course, Moro is going to become stronger to face him, but at the exact same time, it could be the best thing to get under Moro's skin like Goku versus Frieza. Goku let Frieza live essentially at the end before Frieza forced his hand, but Goku let Frieza live to live with his shame. And that's exactly what the Grand Priest did, even though Moro went back for more. But let's talk about Return to Monkey because this is such a cooler and better way to introduce Ultra Eagle than randomly throwing it in an arc after the Moro arc. Um, this one is, is it's purposeful, it makes sense. 
It is a connection not only to the God of Destruction who the Moro creature is trying to face, but at the same time it has a connection because Vegeta was kind of using a little bit of it before when he was facing off against Moro. It's a connection to Monkey. It's a connection to the Saiyan spirit, which is something that Moro is not going to know anything about. And so I know this studio. I know Rising Fist. I know, I know Blackbird Studios creators. I know that they're going to be doing Ultra Ego in my opinion, like the transformation, the way it's supposed to be, they're going to be doing it so much better where the pain gives you more strength, similar to the Hulk. And Vegeta is going to rank up in strength at the same level, if not immediately at the same level to what Moro is at the end of this. But I can't wait to see part two. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this. It's going to be Blackscape signing off. Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content. Oh,